International Drive in Orlando, Florida is the epicenter of fun. Where else can you swim with dolphins, free fall at 130 miles per hour, build your own roller coaster, or soar through the air on a manta? Think about the experiences that you get for a family that, who, who maybe have never been to Orlando before. They're staying on International Drive. And all of these things are available to them. This is the entertainment capital of, a, of the world, not just America. There's no experience like us, really. We pretty much have it all here. On iDrive, the thrills are nothing short of Titanic. From 80-foot drops to shrunken heads, exciting attractions are sure to have you on pins and needles, if you dare. It's certainly the place to be when visitors are looking for something else to do from the big parks. You don't have to leave the drive. I mean, there's so much to do on the drive. It's all about the family relationship and the memories that we create. Meet iDrive's ambassadors of fun, amusement pioneers and creative talent that deliver unforgettable memories for millions of tourists to Orlando every year. It's a job that comes with many perks. There's all kinds of attractions that you don't see anywhere else in the world. That's why I drive is so special. So buckle up and get ready for a big splash. The number one destination for family entertainment is International Drive. Our trip starts at SeaWorld, the very first attraction on International Drive. This premier aquatic destination was the vision of water park pioneer George Malay. Malay and three of his partners envisioned a theme park where guests could experience marine life. Today, that vision lives on at SeaWorld parks in San Diego, San Antonio, and Orlando. I understand SeaWorld's mission, and it's to celebrate and connect and care and to bring all these people closer to animals, to learn about the marine world, find out what we can do to help save these animals. That's what keeps me really excited about coming back to work. Even though it's been 32 years, I still love coming to work for this place. SeaWorld opened in 1973. There were no manta-shaped roller coasters back then. Dolphins and Shamu were the star attractions. But like Orlando, SeaWorld was a young park with plenty of room to grow. It was a much smaller place, uh, much, obviously a much smaller place than it is right now. But it was still an incredible place for people to come and to get experiences that they couldn't get anyplace else, to meet animals up close, uh, to see Shamu, to meet whales and dolphins. And horses. <laughs> for many years, SeaWorld was owned by M. Heiser Bush. But before Clydesdales, there was publishing tycoon William Jovanovich. In 1976, Harcourt Brace Jovanovich made a bold decision to buy SeaWorld and move their headquarters from New York to Orlando. They were looking for something to venture into, and at that time they were insurance and, and publishing. And they wanted to get into theme parks, they wanted to get in the entertainment business. And they did a really, really good job with the parks. They set a terrific direction for us. A lot of expansions came during the HPJ days. The 80s brought new marine attractions. Even the Super Friends got in on the act. And long before downtown Disney, there was Florida Festival. It was a great place. It was a dining, entertainment, shopping district uh, under these massive tents where you could have great meals at a place called Alley Gators. Always a band going on, had a nice Caribbean feel to it. I think it was just ahead of its time and just wasn't part of HBJ's plan, but it was a, it was a place that we recall fondly. Under HBJ, Shamu was given a new home. The vision behind Shamu Stadium was amazing. It's a seven million gallon facility. It is still state of the art, even though it was built in 1984. It was the opportunity to bring thousands of people close to killer whales. We needed to expand. We, we wanted to get into a, a SeaWorld breeding program uh, so that we can continue the lineage of Shamu. We've had, I don't know how many births of killer whales there. I've been there for quite a few of them. It's, a, it's an amazing thing. SeaWorld's fantastic underwater stars share the spotlight with incredibly talented trainers. They've been delighting audiences with breathtaking stunts for decades. It's remarkable how many trainers here actually came to SeaWorld as little children and were inspired to make a difference and they wanted to always work at SeaWorld and now they do. You know, and it takes a lot of hard work. I mean, first of all, they have to be great athletes and they have to be great swimmers. But then they have to really have that ability to connect with animals. So not only do they have to be a great trainer, they have to learn the performance skills that go along with it. They're remarkable people. Two more parks, Discovery Cove and Aquatica, complete the SeaWorld family. Our guests would see the Whale and Dolphin show and they would see the trainers having these incredible interactions and they said, I want to do that too. How can I do that? 
So that's where Discovery Cove came from, was really the, the opportunity and the ability that only we had was to get our guests closer to dolphins. Our guests also told us, why don't you guys have a water park? There's a certain kind of fun that I can have at SeaWorld. You're associated with water. Bring me that fun. And from that came Aquatica. Amazing shows and attractions are part of SeaWorld's unique way of blending entertainment with the message of protecting our natural environment. I think the message that we want people to take away, not only the pure joy that they have felt together as a family, but that individually they can make a difference. You know, we get to be the storytellers here in entertainment to tell those wonderful stories of how families can connect with each other and the natural world, and hopefully inspire guests to take action. SeaWorld has something that is incredibly real, and we're, we're so proud of that, and I think it's what, what everybody who comes to SeaWorld, that's what they're looking to experience in no other way possible, in a way that only SeaWorld can do. Our next stop is at the Fun Spot. Multiple go-kart tracks, rides, arcade games, and bumper cars provide non-stop entertainment. This action-filled park is run by Ollie Drive's royal family of fun. Meet the Aries. Fun Spot is the vision of John Airy Sr., a Florida native who earned his high school spending cash operating go-kart rides. I started working at a little go-kart track up in Maitland. One thing led to another, and I took the opportunities that came along the way. Since then, he's owned amusement centers from Maitland to Maryland, but 365 days of sunshine lured him to iDrive. In 1978, I realized how International Drive was developing. We came down here and saw the traffic and the walk traffic. It reminded me a lot of Ocean City, Maryland. John left Carts a go go in Ocean City and headed back to Orlando. His first debut near the tourist strip would become a local favorite for many years. We bought a piece of property and opened up a little uh, park called Fun and Wheels. Fun and Wheels started off as a one go kart track and quickly grew to include an arcade, miniature golf, water rides, and bumper cars. Quite honestly, that's where my philosophy of more is more developed because the more we did, the more we rose, the more profit we made. Eventually, John headed back up the coast and purchased an amusement center in Myrtle Beach. This park's name would become Orlando's new attraction. When we bought that business, we got the name Fun Spot, and then we just kind of trademarked it and came down here in Orlando with it. Right by his side, learning the ropes of the business, was his son, John Jr. You ready? I'm ready. On your mark. Get set. Go! Ah! In the summer times, we would go on long two, three month vacations. We go to all different kinds of amusement parks all across the world. I get to ride all different kinds of rides. And then uh, finally, when I graduated through high school, I said, you know what? This is so much fun. I want to be a part of this business. And he isn't the only member of the Airy clan with a job at Fun Spot. Our CFO is my Aunt Sarah. Our sales manager is my Aunt Lola. My wife, which is my personal favorite, is our hag bookkeeper. And then my brother is one of the rides managers as well. We are a family run business. Not only my personal family, it's the people and employees that we hire. We've got employees that have been with me over 30 years. We know that it's more than just making a living, it's, it's a life. John Jr. is also Fun Spot's celebrity face, ending every commercial with, It's huge! And that's taken off all across Orlando. Everybody loves that. It's huge became Fun Spot's catchphrase completely by accident. We were giving away free soda in the park. We were gonna give away a free car to a customer. And then dad says, well, let's give away a free car to one of our employees, the employee of the summer. And I go, dad, that's huge. And he goes, that's our slogan, that's it. That slogan, along with a great atmosphere, brings over half a million visitors to the park every year. All the families that come in here, it's, it's all about creating memory. Dad's taught us from day one that there's three things, safe, clean, and fun. You take care of those three things, Everybody will always trust that you have a good product and they'll always come back to you and expect a good time. In 2013, Fun Spot really will be huge, adding 10 acres and more thrilling attractions. Not bad for a guy who once earned a few dollars a week running go karts. It takes persistence, it takes innovation, it takes creativeness, it's, it's coming to work every day, it's showing up, but most of all, the, the blessings of God. There are some unbelievable attractions on iDrive. Welcome to Wonderworks, an indoor amusement park for the mind. 
or as the story goes, a mystery science experiment that turned this laboratory upside down. Wonderworks was a top secret research facility and there a group of scientists were trying to find answers to the unexplainable. They created a tornado and something went wrong and the power of it was unleashed throughout the laboratory, carrying it all the way to International Drive, landing upside down on top of a brick warehouse. So what you're seeing is an upside down building that's got three levels of fun inside. All of the experiments are intact, ready to explore. This wacky concept almost didn't get past a brainstorm, let alone a tornado. When the drawing was presented for a museum of the senses, this big-time lawyer wasn't interested. A guy tells me one day, he knew me, and he said, I want to come and show you something. And he comes to the all, comes right here, and uh, he has this sketch of an upside-down house. And he goes, what do you think? I'm like, what would you do with it? And I said, I don't like that. But John Morgan had an idea. My lifelong friend, a guy named Robin Turner and I, owned and ran fairs all over America. We had the New Jersey State Fair, the Philadelphia County Fair. We had this big tent that this guy would come around and do all these interactives. And, and that was so popular, it was very basic, it was nothing. What if you built a place that was totally interactive all the way through, either, with either you're doing it or watching it? I said, yes, I am interested. Wonderworks landed on iDrive in 1998. Each of the exhibits are the result of detailed planning and research to make sure fun is part of the educational experience. If you tell a kid, we're going to the Science Center, they're like, no. And they want to come and move and have fun. The ongoing deal with WonderWorks is to keep finding new things that stimulate the mind, stimulate the body, and that people are either interacting with themselves or having a ball watching somebody else interact. There's certainly an educational twist on everything that you're learning inside because it is science-based. You can lie on a bed of nails that's made of 3,500 nails that will elevate you, design and ride your roller coaster, so you're actually being able to do the exhibit and then learn as you go throughout. One of my favorite characters of all time is P.T. Barnum. What I believe is if we built it and it was realistic, like for P.T. Barnum, people will pay to get behind the curtain. It's really not the steak you sell, it's the sizzle. WonderWorks makes science sizzle from the inside out. If I could just have one dollar for every picture taken of my WonderWorks around the country. If you go out there morning, noon, and night, there's people in the middle of the road, across the street. There are four WonderWorks in North America and more on the way. And to think, he almost turned it down. I don't golf. I don't uh, boat. I don't fish. I like to build upside down houses around America. Are you ready to go back to Titanic? Well, what are you waiting for? Let's go. iDrive's Titanic experience relives that fateful journey for tourists every day. This legendary attraction has survived three reincarnations in Orlando, proving that the legacy of this fateful ship is truly unsinkable. We were originally at the Mercado, where we opened in uh, actually April 10th, 1999. And we were there until they closed down the Mercado. And we moved over to the Orlando Science Center. And we were there for about a year and a half, and then we found our permanent home right off of International Drive. It's good to be back home. <laughs> the Titanic Experience received an extreme makeover by Premier Exhibitions and RMS Titanic. They wanted another permanent exhibit. How exciting. They found us, bought us, now we're here with 100 real artifacts from the ship, our actors who just combine to make a most unique experience. Trained actors portraying actual passengers lead guests through 17 galleries of memorabilia and full-scale recreations of the Titanic's interior including a tour of the Grand Staircase. We portray a wide variety of people from the ship. So the fact that we can keep their memory alive and sometimes introduce people that most people haven't even heard of. We talk about boarding the ship. We talk about who's going to be on the ship. History about the people. You can even share a toast with the captain at a Titanic feast. It really is amazing. We keep everything as historically accurate as humanly possible. It's not just us. It, you know, we're representing them. It really 
brings a different element to the Titanic attraction and it's something that you won't see anywhere else. Something else you won't see at other exhibits are these real artifacts, many on display for the first time. It's because of RMS Titanic and Premier that we do have all of the uh, wonderful artifacts. We also have the telegraph that actually sat on the bridge. Just as it was on Titanic, only a hundred years later now, and is still set at full stop. Can you imagine? There's so many things that really just make your heart flutter. The journey's breathtaking finale truly brings the mystery of the Titanic to life. Three tons of the ship's hull. I'm in awe every time I see it. You can smell the ocean. You're looking at Titanic. All the work that went into it, all of the people, it really is just a sight. <laughs> Sharing history and a love for entertaining makes this iDrive occupation very rewarding. What we do here it really is a very emotional uh, job uh, to come to every day. I did Titanic over at Mercado and moved with it. So has it been part of my life? Oh yeah. And then after I'm gone, I hope somebody else comes in here and keeps on doing what we do. It never grows old. Every time we do it, it's like doing it for the first time. Americans have been playing miniature golf since the 1920s. Its fancier cousin, Adventure Golf, puts more excitement in your swing. The Pirates dropped their anchor on iDrive in 1987. Pirates Cove was the first adventure golf right here on International Drive. It was a unique situation because of the height and the waterfall. People thought it was a park and wanted to just wander through. When you visit, make sure you meet Alice Vogel. She's been with Pirates since the beginning. I came to the area as a gymnastic teacher and was approached to take the management job and I didn't think I could do it because gymnastics was my life and how could I run a golf course? I've been here ever since. <laughs> Pirates Cove has 36 challenging holes surrounded by waterfalls, caves, and of course, swashbuckling pirates. It's a great place to come to. I feel like I'm on vacation almost every day. Repeat visitors will recognize Alice. She rarely misses a day of golf. I'm here every day of the year. <laughs> Children that have been coming to the course for many years had their birthday parties here. Years later, I've seen them come back with their children. And they'd say, hi, Alice, you're still here. You used to teach gymnastics. So it makes me think I still look the same after 25 years. <laughs> If it's strange, but very real, it must be Ripley's Believe It or Not. But don't call it a museum. It's an auditorium. This strange building is slipping into a freak of nature that's not so unusual in Florida. We are looking for an iconic architectural building that people will stop and be able to say, oh, that's the Ripley building. So when we heard about sinkholes, we thought this was a really good local tie to pretend our building was sinking into the ground in a Florida sinkhole. Expect to be amazed and surprised by what you'll discover in over 10,000 square feet of exhibits. Did you ever see a pool table where the balls roll uphill? Only at Ripley's Believe It or Not here in our pool hall. Named after the famous adventurer and collector Robert Ripley, the auditorium opened in 1993 and continues Ripley's tradition of making the unbelievable believable. Sometimes people think that Ripley's is just kind of weird, crazy stuff, but we've got some really world-class museum pieces here that we're proud to show our guests. I want our collection to be special and hopefully a wow factor that you go, Wow, I've never seen that before. And this is the man who gets to bring it to Orlando. Edward Meyer has been with the company for over 30 years. He travels from Iowa to India in search of the most unusual artifacts. New Zealand, Australia, Thailand, China. I'm not just looking at history. I'm not just looking at science. I'm simply looking for the odd, the unbelievable, and hopefully something you can't see anywhere else. Chances are you've never seen a rickshaw made out of jade or a beetle that plays the Beatles. It's got 167 musical elements. It plays music by itself, or even more fun, you can play the music on it. Move over, Da Vinci. This Last Supper only took 
eight months of Lent to create. It's got about 300 hours worth of doing laundry and hundreds of dollars worth of buying towels to get all the colors that you see, the oranges, the reds. Touch these African fertility statues and a baby might be in your future. People actually plan their vacations from all over the world to come here and see and touch those statues to help them start a family. We've even had people fax their handprints, asking us to rub the handprints on the statue, fax them back or mail them back to them. We're happy to do that for people, believe it or not. Before statues, vampire killing kits, and musical cars go on display, they arrive here at Ripley's corporate office. Within this secret warehouse, everything is prepped, painted, and packaged for delivery. Ripley's entire operation is based in Orlando. We moved our headquarters in 1993, just after we built this museum, because we realized that Orlando was the attraction capital of the world. We catalog it, we photograph it, we measure it, we record where we bought it, who we bought it from, how much we paid for it. Everything comes to Orlando. And then it's shipped to one of Ripley's 32 attractions all over the world, which means everyone gets the chance to see at least one shrunken head. They only come from Ecuador, South America. This particular one is really special because it still has the feather earrings and it still has a necklace robe. Yes, you are supposed to wear this like a necklace. Believe it or not. The next stop on International Drive will have you flying high. Suit up and get ready to skydive at iFly. No prior experience is needed to feel the excitement of free falling at speeds over 100 miles per hour. With a little training, everyone can fly. A lot of people don't even realize who we are and what we are, but when they get here, they're amazed. The feeling is just like jumping, just like skydiving, but you're in that controlled environment. There's no G-force, no feeling, you're floating in there. The instructor is always in there with you, getting you balanced. When he feels you're comfortable, he lets you go, it gets you flying, and then he's there to, to maneuver you, manipulate you, so that you feel comfortable in the tunnel. So just how does this wind tunnel work? Get ready for some heavy science. It's a giant vacuum cleaner. It compacts the air, accelerates it to the point where you can fly in it, and then as it extends on up the tunnel, it slows back down so we can let that air re-enter the atmosphere without a lot of back pressure and noise. Meet Bill Kitchen, the creator of iFly, a former Air Force engineer and radio broadcaster who's living proof that you're never too old to have a life of adventure. I did my first skydive in Boulder, Colorado when I was 40 years old. It was sort of a birthday celebration and I fell in love with the sport. That led to my desire for a whole new career. What better way to do it than to help share with people the thrill of jumping out of an airplane. Been at it ever since. Bill sold his radio stations, traded the pinstripe suits for jumpsuits, and became an inventor of thrill rides, like the stomach-dropping Sky Coaster. I actually drew it on a dinner napkin in Boulder, Colorado, uh, at a Mexican restaurant. Uh, admittedly, after maybe one margarita too many, two years later, the Sky Coaster was the fastest-selling ride in the world. Bill's next invention would bring skydiving simulation to a whole new level, indoors. I realized that a lot of people would love to have that sort of thrill, but didn't want to jump out of an airplane to do it. I didn't invent the wind tunnel, but I did develop the idea of creating a very smooth airflow in an electrically powered tunnel that would allow people to share all the thrills of skydiving. And so that idea uh, is how iFly was born iFly opened as Sky Venture in 1998. Today, there are iFly attractions all over the world, but the granddaddy of them all is on iDrive. Nobody had ever done anything like this before. I've seen three-year-old kids in there with their parents. I've seen a 90-year-old lady fly. I've seen Army Special Forces, the Hooters girls. They've all been in there. iFly is a safe, rewarding experience thanks to a talented staff of instructors. All our trainers, they've jumped out of planes or are skydivers. They basically train at different levels until they get to that level that, that they're allowed to fly with the guests. Everybody gets to feel the thrill of skydiving. 
while we were building this, spending millions of dollars, people would come up and say, you know, this thing is never going to work. You know, that makes you feel real good when you're betting your whole life on something. It did work the first day we turned it on, and uh, it's been working ever since. In military terms, that's mission accomplished. Our tour of International Drive attractions ends where we began, with the man who helped shape Orlando's tourism mecca. George Malay of SeaWorld fame is also the creator of the world's first water park, right here on iDrive. They call him the inventor of water parks. He really would tell you, because he's told me this, this himself in some conversations, that he wasn't an inventor, he was an innovator. What he really had a knack for is finding other things throughout the country and uh, basically melded all those ideas into one park. And that park is wet and wild. My first encounter with George Millay was in 1980 when I came out here as a CPA. And he was larger than life and uh, just a ball of fire, prone to having some temper tantrums. So he was a little intimidating at first but uh, I liked him immediately. George Millay's restless creativity challenged those around him to grow wet and wild from a water playground to a million dollar amusement park. But the wave maker wasn't a money maker in the beginning. The original park in 1977 was just the wave pool, the kids area, and a, a couple of gunite slides. And it, was, it really was pretty much of a failure when it first opened. For the first couple of years, they weren't sure if it was gonna stay in business but they ended up uh, putting in a speed tower that was 60 feet high. So that's when it really became successful. It was kind of a billboard for tourists from I-4. From Orlando to Brazil, the kamikaze-style slide would be the first of many heart-pumping thrills and multi-person rides George Millay would create for Wet n' Wild Parks. He was just a true original. He had uh, an enthusiasm like a teenager. He was always talking, because we traveled a lot together, talking about new ideas, talking about new concepts. For example, the Lazy River. He was the first one that ever came up with that idea. He saw it out in Jakarta, and so he brought it out here to Orlando and introduced it, and it's just really a, a necessary element of a water park. George Millay's water park has inspired similar attractions around the globe, earning him the title Father of the Water Park. First and foremost of his mind was building new attractions every few years. So we've tried to, we've definitely stayed true to that spirit. Wet n' Wild continues to lead the industry with new attractions like Blastaway Beach, billed as the largest family-themed water play area in Florida. Wet n' Wild has always stood for water-oriented thrills in a family environment, and we've always stayed true to that. We've got more multi-passenger rides than any other water park around. That's really our goal, is to have a whole family uh, have thrills, have a great time, and have something for everybody. George Millay sold Wet n' Wild to Universal in 1998. He passed away in 2006, but the captain still presides over his water kingdom every day. He would also like to come out here during our walk and get some soft serve ice cream. He, he was just a creature of habit. So when we renovated the, uh, the ice cream building a couple of years ago, we renamed it George's Ice Cream and we're still serving the, the same brand of ice cream that we did uh, back in the 90s when we used to walk the park with us. International Drive is home to many of the first and the best attractions in the world. The growth and development has been really exciting, not only of iDrive, but of all of Orlando. I think we have a unique place, and that really you know, centers around the sense of family. If you could go one place in the world on a vacation as a family, this is it. Like any destination, the drive continues to reinvent itself. Whether you're an attraction or a restaurant or a hotel, the key really is to stay fresh and to keep new. Their attractions have been around for 20 years and got tired and went away, but they're always new and springing up. We look for a property on iDrive for years. I love Florida, so for me, I worked hard to get this Orlando location, so I couldn't be happier to be here. International Drive continues to grow thanks to the vision and talent of people who love the tourism business. People you know, dream about coming here from all around the world and I'm, I, I get to live it every day. When everybody else is out of school or having fun, a holiday or something, that's when we're the busiest and that's when it demands most of our time. But you know what? The price at the end is, is, is worth it. It's been a great ride. 